So we built this really nice um, ICF basement here. I'm gonna um, got some video footage of it right before or right after we finished it. Um, it turned out really nice. Um, I'm building this video just to show people what happens if you backfill a foundation too soon. Um, this foundation was complete, and we had uh, we just had parged it this day. We're just cleaning up. Um, it's a modular home. There's like that right there is the in-law suite, and there's a main house here. It's like 64 feet long, the main house. That's a garage. We poured the floors, got everything cut, it's parged. The, the place was pretty much backfilled about halfway up along the back wall here. In a minute, I'll uh, walk the wall, and you'll be able to see how full it was. We put a bunch of stone down around the perimeter drain, the excavator did, and then he backfilled with some nice, um, pretty good clean gravel, well-drained gravel. Right there you can see he's about about halfway up with the backfill. The in-law suite's almost backfilled. Right there you can see to the left of the wall that's all gravel. And below that there's probably three feet of stone. Um, everything's ready to go here and uh, <clears throat> we had some issues which I'll show you in a little bit just taking you around the foundation there you go this wall was backfilled with gravel as well you can see there's not a lot of uh, fill up against the wall it's about halfway there's probably three feet showing the black line is the waterproof. So here's a video the homeowner had sent to the excavator of the water that came down the hill at the foundation. So we got like three inches of rain in a couple days. You can see the water. So she was concerned about this. So she sent this to the excavator. I didn't get this video until later. You'd see the water that's coming in this thing. Basically, there was a bunch of soil that was in the back of the house that was blocking all the water from running down towards the foundation. Well, when they put the septic in, um, they moved all that dirt, and the water came down the hill right at the foundation because it wasn't it wasn't graded yet. They were gonna finish grading it and uh, put a swale in there to catch the water, but they hadn't got that done. So at this point, there's no damage to the foundation. It's just a bunch of water running in there. And it was kind of running around and going out to daylight. So it was, the pressure was being relieved. As you can see, she's, she walked right around it. She did a good job giving a heads up to the excavator of what was going on so that he could uh, try to resolve the issue. There you go. So you can see the, the water just plowing around this thing. At this point, I think it was probably putting quite a bit of pressure on the wall, but right there it would go down and out to daylight. Right here, the water kind of hit this corner here. This is the corner. Well, oh, we're still going around, I guess. You can see, oh, there it goes. Right out to daylight that water just running out towards the perimeter drain. So here's what happened. You can see the cracks in this wall. Yeah, that wall pushed straight in from the from the rain and the water. And uh, they finished grading it after the video. Here's some more footage. After the video of the water, the excavator thought that he would fill that in and put some more material in there to keep the water from going in the, around the foundation. So he actually put more material in there, which I believe was a high clay content dirt, and uh, there was a lot of topsoil in it. out the wall. We got one section out. 
not easy to take an ICF foundation apart. I wouldn't recommend it. Using a target saw, cutting it from both sides. Not fun. It's about 20 degrees out here. Not what I want to do during hunting season. Well, we got two sections out of there. See if we can just break it without cutting it. It's a pain in the butt to cut it. So we're hoping that uh, we can keep snapping it and cutting the rebar. It didn't even break on my horizontal cut that time. It wasn't as deep of a cut. This is uh, why you use clean stone and gravel to back for a foundation, any foundation. I've been preaching it for years. What a mess. Foam everywhere. <laughs> oh boy. Everything else is good. Nothing else moved. Had a lot of water come down on this back wall. Had a, cl a clay dirt against it, I think, a little bit. All it takes. Has a lot of pressure. That plate has a lot of pressure. mess in here. It's coming apart though, slowly but surely. I've been cutting it out in sections with the demo saw. Not fun. We did some demo today. Went went fairly well, actually. Um, got most of this wall out of here today, and uh, not too bad, actually. Unfortunate, obviously, but we got to fix this corner. So we got the demo done today. Took us two days to get the wall out of here. We used a big jackhammer to. Take the bottom course out. We step this corner back. Try to get all the busted area out of it. Did the same thing over here. We stepped that corner back because there was some broken inside the corner. So we got all the busted out of the corner. And uh, got everything cleaned up. Got all the clay out of there that caused the problem. And uh, we're going to start fixing it, maybe tomorrow. Stay tuned. So here we're just showing how we epoxied 5 8 rebar into the wall. We did a bunch of horizontals here, and then we did verticals here every 18 inches. We put double rebar in the wall, too. Right, 
We're getting ready to pour the new wall here. This is the wall we had to repair, we had to fix it. it got blown in. We did double rebar down in there. Make sure everybody can see that. We put two rebars in every course, 5 8 rebar. We also put rebar every 18 inches vertically. And we also epoxied every rebar in to the footer, so um, couldn't move it anymore, or again. That's all the clay dirt that was in there. There was some gravel, but that clay got in there and had so much rain and stuff. It washed that wall right in, blew this whole wall. This wall is 64 feet long, and it blew it right in, so tie it in. We got a lot of rebar coming down in, in here as well. We drill them right in and epoxy them in down through there. See all the rebar down in there. Tons of it, all 5'8". We don't want to be back here again. There's our pump, 20 meter pump, the Paley Concrete. Free advertisement. They didn't think they were coming back here. So we got the wall poured, went pretty smooth, vibrated it all the way down. Wall repaired, ICF wall repair, that's how you do it. I don't recommend it. Do not backfill too soon, because that was a lot of work. There's the repair, sewer line going through, tie it right in there was not as hard as I thought it was going to be, but it was hard enough. Signing out.